Imagine this. What if I told you choosing a fighter jet isn't just about missiles, speed, or stealth? It's more like choosing between an iPhone with wings that Apple can brick remotely and a customizable Android, one you actually own and control. Yeah, that's the real game behind the scenes. Welcome to the billion dollar chessboard where stealth meets sovereignty and where the fighter jet you fly determines this. Are you flying free or flying with strings attached? Now this debate, it's not just in war rooms or strategy reports. It's blowing up everywhere, from Reddit threads to the hangars of Aero India 2025. The F-35 versus Su-57, the ultimate dogfight of ideology, power, and politics. And this year, it's the most talked about showdown in the sky. Hey, Jet Royce here. Welcome back to The Grid. Today, we're diving into a clash that's not just about tech. It's about control, trust, and the future of air dominance. Let's get into it. The F-35 Lightning II versus the Su-57 Felon. On paper, it's America's tech marvel, squaring off against Russia's stealth predator. But here's what the defense brochures don't tell you. This fight isn't just about who flies faster or hits harder. It's way deeper than that. Think of the F-35 as an iPad Pro with missiles hooked into a supercharged surveillance web you don't actually own. Now the Su-57, that's the Linux of fighter jets. Flexible, modifiable, raw power, if you know how to handle it. And trust me, by the end of this video, you'll see why countries are getting kicked out of billion dollar programs, why deals are collapsing, and how India might just be building something that could flip the entire game. Let's start with the brains. The F-35's integrated core processor, it runs on 8 million lines of code. That's more than most smartphones. It's got 360 degree infrared vision, sensor fusion that would make Iron Man do a double take and it can literally let the pilot see through the aircraft. Wild, right? But here's the kicker. You don't get admin access. Every software update, controlled by Lockheed Martin. Want to plug in your own missiles? Better ask Washington first. Yeah, let that sink in. The Su-57, whole different approach. Its IMA BK suite is modular, open architecture. It can track 60 targets and strike 16 at once. But what really makes it stand out? Control. Countries like India can tweak the avionics, plug in their own systems, build their own software. This is the line in the sand between renting power and owning it. Now here's where it gets really interesting. How these jets talk. The F-35 uses Mattletech, basically a secure group chat for NATO jets. Think military-grade iMessage. Fast, encrypted, clean. But if you're not in the NATO club, you're on SMS. And here's the big one. All that data routes through US-controlled servers, your missions, your targets, your strategy. All of it logged, monitored, and visible. The Su-57? It's like an offline shortwave radio with two locks and no Wi-Fi. Less slick, sure, but guess what? Nobody's listening in. Countries can demand their own encryption keys, no external oversight, zero visibility from outsiders. So ask yourself, do you want your national security running through someone else's cloud? Now, let's talk real-world examples. Turkey was in, a full partner in the F-35 program, set to receive over 100 jets. Then they bought Russia's S-400 missile system. Washington's response? You're out. No jets, no refunds, no negotiation. Then there's the UAE. They signed the Abraham Accords, normalized ties with Israel, hoped to get F-35s. What happened? Ghosted, over security concerns. But India? They looked at the options and said, thanks, but we'll build our own. The AMCA project isn't just another stealth jet. It's about technological sovereignty. And then there was the Kerala incident. 
an F-35 reportedly makes an emergency landing near Indian airspace. The internet explodes. Theories, memes, accusations. And suddenly, the F-35's not just a weapon. It's a PR liability with wings. Let's break down the economics because this part, shocking. F-35A, $80 million per unit. Over $36,000 per flight hour. Total program cost, $1.5 trillion over 30 years. That's more than the GDP of some countries. SU-57, $35 to $45 million per unit. Flight hour, around $10 to $15,000. And Russia holds full control over its production lines. No global supply chain headaches. It's like this. Do you want a Lamborghini that needs parts from seven countries to run? Or a solid sports car you can service in your own garage? And here's the big question for 2025. Digital sovereignty. The F-35 allegedly has kill switches, remote shutoff capabilities that could ground fleets if Washington disapproves. You bought the jet but Uncle Sam holds the remote. Of course, the US denies it. Lockheed Martin and the Pentagon say, no kill switches, no back doors. Sounds reassuring, but let's be honest. The US doesn't need a kill switch when it already holds all the kill levers. We've covered that in detail in our previous F-35 video. Check it out if you haven't already. Links in the description. Meanwhile, the SU-57 gives buyers greater access to the source code. Want to integrate local weapons? Go for it. Want to change up the mission software? No problem. Train pilots without foreign oversight? Absolutely. It's the difference between being locked into a sleek iPhone or owning a powerful Linux machine that you control top to bottom. This isn't just F-35 versus SU-57. It's a battle between two philosophies. The F-35, join our system, follow our rules, accept the oversight. It's sleek, smart, and subtle chains come included. The SU-57, less polished, maybe. But what you buy, you own. What you fly, you control. And when you fight, you do it on your own terms. So what's the right choice? If you want plug-and-play NATO integration and you're okay being a junior partner, go F-35. If you want performance, flexibility, and freedom to tweak what matters, the SU-57 is your bird. If you want to write your own rules, fly your own flag, and shape your own skies, then the future belongs to programs like AMCA. Bottom line, for missions that demand maximum stealth, sensor fusion, and smooth allied integration, the F-35 is king. The Su-57, it delivers strong dogfighting chops, super crews, and lower costs, but it doesn't match the F-35's networked warfare dominance. What do you think? Team F-35, Team Su-57, or Team Build Your Own? Let's talk in the comments. If you like this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe for more sharp military insights, and tap the bell because we're just getting started.